I'm going to ask you if you'd like to join us in the Pledge of, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can't find my notes. Um, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll, please. Councilor Ryder. Here. Councilor Junta. Present. Councilor Khan. Present. Councilor Brown. Here. Councilor Jean. Present. Councilor Tontar. Here. Councilor Vogue. Present. Councilor D. Here. Councilor Devlin. Here. Councilor Earl. Present. <laughs> <laughs> Council President Khan. Present. Are there any late file items? There is one late file item uh, that the councils will see on their desk. It's a resolution for 80 with respect to the very respective problem. Motion to waive the rules to accept the late file items. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Nays? Nice. Okay, good. And uh, we'll take that up at the start of the meeting, actually. No. Um, we'd like to recognize the high school boys cross country team that has performed so admirably this season and particularly the last two years. Coach Hendiger, congratulations again. Another outstanding season. I don't know when it stops for you, Don. It just keeps coming. And to you boys uh, who have performed uh, so exceptionally well this season, um, as a former runner and retired coach, um, as I said to a couple of you earlier, um, I have some sense of what it takes to accomplish what you've accomplished. We wish we could hand you the keys to the city. I'll take it too. Don't push your luck. <laughs> Anyhow, um, I, we do have at least a resolution we'd like to read honoring you and your accomplishments, and it will be placed in the permanent record of the city of Newburyport. Ordered by the city council on November 28, 2018. Whereas the Newburyport Boys Cross Country Team has continued its outstanding success to achieve many winning seasons, as whereas the 2018 boys cross country team won the MIAA Division II All-State Meet, capturing the boys program's first ever All-State Championship, senior, senior captain Sam Aquaviva repeated as individual All-State Champion to lead the way, and all five of the team's scoring runners finished within the top 40 overall. That's tough. No. <laughs> Whereas the individual state championship titles were, was won by Sam Aquaviva of the same cross country team. Aquaviva repeated as individual all state champion and all five of the team's scoring runners finished the top 40 overall. He finished first overall in, in time of 16 minutes, 33.89 <laughs> seconds. After John Lucy was next, after fighting off a late charge, excuse me, from Arlington Catholic's Sean Kay to repeat as champion. And junior John Lucy was next to cross the finish line, placing fifth overall. Nice job, John. <laughs> Sophomore Dries Fadil followed shortly, did I get that right? Yeah, good job. <laughs> followed shortly after in 31st. And crucially, junior Cam Lassen was 34th, and sophomore Peter King. Both came in well ahead of their closest competitors, fourth and fifth finishers, all but assuring the Clippers of the title. So it's four, five, and six runners that make all the difference on a team run. Whereas the Newburyport cruised through the talented Cape Ann League schedule with relative ease, going undefeated to win the Cal Kinney Division Championship, the Clippers followed that up by cruising to a victory in the Cal Open and Division IV Eastern Mass Championships. And whereas Coach Henniger and his staff continue to produce outstanding teams, and provide inspiring role models for the youth of our city. Now, therefore, the Newburyport City Council hereby formally resolves to congratulate and recognize 
the considerable achievements resulting from the tremendous hard work and dedication of all the runners and outstanding coaches. Signed this day, Councillor Barry Connor. Thank you for coming. guys this is just a few of the team um, I got the date mixed up so we had to scramble at the last minute to get some people here um, we actually are a team of 65 boys and the program total guys and girls together was 135 this year um, but these guys did a spectacular job this season as evidenced by what Barry said um, it didn't happen by accident it didn't happen by magic there was an awful lot of Hard work, dedication. Um, if you drive around the streets in the report, you'll probably see these guys out. And if you get up really early, in the really early in the morning, you're more likely to see them. But they're out there all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's what got it done. It was nothing but a lot, awful lot of hard work. Um, they uh, are very proud of what they achieved as well they should be. They're very proud to represent New Report High School and um, very proud to be members of the city and we and represent them with that championship. So again, thank you very much. And we're proud that they represent us. <laughs> the text, we'll give you a, a framed version before too much longer, all right? Okay. Hope nobody was listening. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Good job, guys. Good, Good work. Job. Thank you. Yeah. You can high five everybody around the table. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. nice job. Thank you. Congratulations. Nice work. Thank you. 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 Thank you can have it if you want. Yeah. That was a great bunch. Um, we'll start with public comment period. Make sure he has it. Make sure it's all over it. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, Let's uh, take that out of order. I'll need a motion to take the. Uh, so do it. So move the recognition document out of order. It's moved, seconded. Second. Yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those in opposed, nay. Is there a motion to approve? Second. Seconded. Motion to approve. Wait, did I seconded. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Very well. Thank you, Councillors. Uh, we have a relatively short, blessedly short agenda tonight. Oh, oh yeah. Um, Let's keep it that way. Let's do that. Uh, eight people have signed up to speak. First is Matt Kane. There's no road. I hope we got your name right, Matt. M-A-C-C-K-A-N. Thanks for your time. Um, I'm here this evening to um, ask uh, the city councilors to allow the citizens of Newburyport to have a vote on whether or not we should adopt the marijuana facilities in our town. Um, as you are all aware, the ballot question that passed four years ago um, had an opt out policy. Um, and it allowed what really is a democratic process to occur, which is to have an educated discussion about um, issues related to what marijuana in Newburyport might look like, um, you know, how it might be uh, controlled. Um, uh, it, it allows for uh, open discussion, which is what you know our 
our forefathers wanted when they created this great democracy. Um, and, uh, and I think that's ultimately what most people here in the city want. Um, it's funny, I was just thinking about this uh, last night. I've lived here in Newburyport since 2003. Um, and so it's about, it's about 15 years. And it seems to me about the first 12 years of that, um, there was vigorous debate. And newspaper articles, and I'm sure countless hours spent in this room, to talk about a silly parking garage. And in the two years, since this ballot initiative has passed, there's been little to no discussion or education about what marijuana facilities in our town might look like. And I think it's really important that we have those discussions and that you don't just take the 55-45 vote that happened in Newburyport for granted. I want to share a couple of facts. Um, over the past week, our uh, back's been against the wall here a bit. I've been involved in personally collecting about 100 signatures, maybe 90 something. Um, what I can tell you is that out of those round number 100 signatures, three people wouldn't sign. One felt like they had already made their decision and they were fine with marijuana shops. Another woman actually didn't want it, and, uh, but didn't want to sign it for other reasons. I don't know, maybe she was scared of it. Uh, <laughs> and then a third had actually had a conflict of interest. So, that's 97% of the people that I spoke to um, wanted this. Now, another interesting fact, about 50% of those people voted to legalize it. So in Newburyport, my own math, the 100 signatures that I got, 50 of them voted to legalize marijuana, 50 didn't. Everybody agreed, a couple more things. Everybody agreed that it's our right, our constitutional right, have a vote on this matter as the, the ballot question number four allowed or uh, put on two years ago. Um, the only reason I'm involved in this, I'm going to go over it. The only reason I'm involved in this is not because I have a strong opinion on if it should be here or not. In fact, I think we should have an educated discussion on it. I've really kind of only heard one side of it. The only reason I'm here tonight is because I got angry. I got angry that somebody was going to take my constitutional rights away, as I see it. So I, I leave that with you, and I, and I ask that the city council pushes forward with um, uh, allowing the taxpayers and voting citizens in Newburyport the ability to have an educated discussion and make a vote on if this is something we want in our town. And I also realized tonight when I was driving up that I had an extra one of these sheets, and as people who have know how to go out and collect votes and uh, understand what a democracy means when you get elected, um, your right to vote is beyond all the most important one. So I brought this with me tonight. Some of you may have signed it. I think I counted 12 of you. There's only 10 signature lines here, but I asked that you all sign it tonight if you haven't already. So with that, and somebody at the end of the day will collect it for you guys. Thanks very much for your attention. Thank you. Uh, I, I failed to inform um, Mr. Kane before he got up here that it's a two minute time limit on people, so I'm gonna ask you, if you see me going like this, that means your time is almost up, okay? <laughs> Terrific. Uh, Thomas Murray from uh, Two Top of Rain. Um, my, my wife, uh, Amory Clancy, uh, she's a local dentist in town. So here to uh, echo uh, many of the points that, in, everybody can hear me fine, yes? Uh, that Matt was ec uh, echoing or, or speaking about first is that really think the decision to have retail marijuana shops here in Newburyport needs to be taken back to a pragmatic decision decision-making process. Uh, certainly understand that a bill was passed or the decriminalization was passed a number of years ago, which is fine. And, but now it, it's such an important decision that uh, we feel that uh, the citizens of, of, of the community should have an opportunity to, to vote on it and to have a clear understanding of, of, what, it, of what it would look like. Uh, I too feel it's uh, somewhat of a, uh, it is a democratic process. I feel that uh, uh, when we make a decision 
such as this, it's important to reach out to, the, to those in the community. And the thing that is, um, and as, as uh, Matt was, uh, I think, starting to point out, as you guys would know, when it's time for you to become elected, you really have to reach out, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't just happen, right? You don't say, I'm running for city council, and all of a sudden somebody votes for it and you get there. You have to campaign. You have to go to people's houses, put up signs, et cetera. So I, I know there, there was some information disseminated maybe over the last six months, year or so, about the potential of uh, marijuana retail shops coming into town. But quite frankly, I never heard it. My wife never heard it. But we do hear when you are up for re-election. We hear that because you, you actually put it out there very strongly, very passionately. And so we feel that this is such an important decision for the community that you should do the same here. Give us the opportunity. Thank you. And, uh, and that's all I have to say. It's a, nice, it's a pragmatic approach to a uh, decision that is uh, very important for the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lindy Landfair, 347 High Street, and um, I would like to strongly encourage you all to, um, to put the opt-out issue on the ballot also, because we do need more discussion on this issue, but um, even more important is on the news tonight, there were communities that have already opened themselves up to a lot of on unexpected consequences like traffic that they didn't they didn't know about and I don't and I'd like for us to discuss this more so that we don't ha aren't in the same position and that you know we don't suffer the way some of these communities are that have already opened themselves up to um, to selling retail marijuana in their community thank you thank you Uh, Pat Daniels. Patty Daniels, Low Street, Newburyport, Ward 5. Um, I have been embarrassed, insulted, intimidated in a Facebook group of 9,000 people because of my desire to put this on the ballot. I have spoken at every meeting against it. Um, I moved here in 1981 with my job for the Commonwealth. I have worked with prisons. I have worked with parole. I believe and I have spoken to police officers. This is a gateway drug. I have a brother who started at 14 with alcohol, went on to pot, and he's still out there. Um, Dean Ray has had many experts on, and um, the unintended consequences out in the states that have legalized should be looked at. Um, OUI THC, I think everybody has seen a breathalyzer or knows what that is. City Marshal stated that we would not see that in his lifetime. So what that means is cops can, by observation, talk about someone may have been under the influence. As we don't have enough police, people are speeding, I don't want it on the streets, I don't want it in Ward 5. Um, we have an opiate crisis in the United States. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Connie Preston? No. Hi, believe it or not, I'm not actually here to speak about recreational marijuana sales tonight. Uh, <laughs> Connie Preston, I am the vice chair and treasurer of the Tree Commission, and I'm here simply to answer any questions you may have for our free cash proposal tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lynn Scow. Hi, my name is Lynn Scow. I've uh, been in front of you before for the last few city council meetings. I live at 75 High Street. Um, I started appearing here in September when I read in the paper about 
uh, the possibility of recreational use marijuana shops in our town. And uh, this was not a battle that I intended to get so involved in, but the more I spoke to people and the more I listened to people, the more I really feel strongly that this is an issue that should be decided by the people. And so we, um, I started talking to people who talked to other people who talked to more people. And the intensity and the breadth of the movement now that we would call the op opt-out movement has really been breathtaking for me. Um, we now have over 1,100 signatures on our petition um, to put this question to a ballot. And we're still collecting. We fully intend to keep going, um, both to educate ourselves and to educate the voters um, of what we hope will be a special election in Newburyport on this issue. So I'm just here to update you and to let you know that we're really excited. And um, we hope you guys are too, because it's nice to see people in your community involved. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's it for tonight. In terms of public comment, thank you all for your remarks. There was only six. Yeah, you said there were eight. You had yeah, eight. there was. Are you Mark Donovan? I apologize. I passed you over, Mark. <laughs> it's random. <laughs> no. Uh, thank you for having me here. I appreciate the opportunity to speak in front of the council and um, understand the importance of citizens doing so. I come to also speak about the opt-out um, discussion and um, where it's headed. And ho ho hopefully, State your how's address. this? Uh, Mark Donovan, 17A Harrison Street, Newburyport. So I um, also come forth to speak about this issue for a couple of reasons. Most importantly, because it's becoming a more enhanced topic of discussion in the community. So most places I go today, somebody's asking about it. People are talking about it. Opinions are being shared mostly. Some information is being shared. I find a lot of it not completely accurate. And that leads to the second reason I'm here, because I do have direct industry experience, having been involved as an owner, a past owner, a board of director member of two substance use treatment and counseling centers. These are nationally based centers. One at the time was the largest treatment center in New England. The other is an Illinois based company with a national presence. And with that, um, there are a few things that I would, I, I would debate. And, and, and then another that I just want to point out some realities about. The first is around, um, is around the comparison with alcohol to marijuana. And just simply put, the, the contradiction, I hope isn't lost on anybody, of one alcohol has issues, societal problems that we recognize and we acknowledge. The other one, likewise, it has societal issues that are introduced. So the logic of following one that presents community problems with another that presents community problems, I just, I get lost at the logic that is put forth. So I'd ask all of you to really consider that. One bad followed by another bad doesn't equal a good as far as I'm concerned. The other is around the economic realities so it's well documented that drug use, the cost of drug use to society is in the billions of dollars across the country. You could extrapolate down, figure out what that means in terms of Newburyport um, pretty easily. But the reality is when you look at introducing something that's going to be an income generator, and in the case of Newburyport, I understand that to be a pretty nominal amount. If I'm, uh, if I'm not correct, it's somewhere around $100,000 from what I've come to learn. Maybe that's per shop, maybe that's uh, the, the fee, I think it is, not a tax, at least initially, for a period of time. So pretty inconsequential amount when you consider the overall budget of the city. So we're going to use those dollars, if I understand this correctly, to educate on drug use and drug abuse. So again, is the irony lost on anybody that if we introduce something that needs economic support to educate or even in, help enhance law enforcement, why would you do that? The logic is just lost on me. 
It's not about legalizing pot. It's about those two realities. The last is the black market. So I know I've gone over time, so I'll finish with this because I lived this for a long period of time, and it's well documented what happens in communities like ours, where there are legalized retail marijuana shops. What happens is drug dealers, they go to where the goods are, right? Why does a robber go to a bank? It's where the money is. So dealers do come, they do find pockets in close proximity to these shops, and they sell to three people, those who want cheaper marijuana, those who want marijuana and or other drugs, and those who aren't old enough to buy it. And then the perpetual cat and mouse game between law enforcement and the dealers happens, but not before more sellers and more buyers come into our community, if the retail shops are here. So in closing, I, I, I'm making, I think, some strong points, and I hope that it's taken into consideration when at least you decide if we, as a better educated community today, than we have been, get a chance to vote. Thank you. Thank you. I apologize for skipping over your name. Um, we have no mayor's comment tonight. I know this is coming as a shock and disappointment to many of you, <laughs> but uh, she's under the weather. Um, the Chief of Staff is here. If you have questions about matters that are uh, under consideration, uh, you can call him at the end of the meeting or during uh, uh, the week. He's available. Um, but I think we ought to move on through the rest of the agenda without the mayor's comment tonight. And I hope the mayor is feeling better when I see her again, hopefully tomorrow, perhaps the day after. We'll move on to the consent agenda. The consent agenda this evening consists of the following. Approval of the minutes for the November 13th meeting. There are three transfers, transfer 33, the uh, Commission on Disabilities, $3,300 to accessible swings, the same amount for the budget funding. Transfer 34, free cash, $19,750 to highway maintenance, trees specifically, same amount budget finance. Transfer 35, gas, $80,000 to GPS, oil, fuel and oil, same amount for budget finance. One communication, communication 98, it's an A-frame for life is good, that will go to uh, license and permits. And one first reading of appointment, appointment 73 for Ron Center, uh, 10 Madison Street as a special police officer. Motion That's to approve. And second. Motion and second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is done. Let's move to the regular agenda. The mayor's update is not here, so we'll dispense with that. Appointments. Appointments are second reading, appointment 67. Karen uh, popped in 49 Morgan Street to CBA at the park representative at 1031 2021. Appointment 68, Patricia Kim, 185 High Street, Health Commission until 1030 2021. Appointment 69, Adrian Silversmith for Willow Ave, Health Commission until 1030 2019. Following three are real appointments. Seventy. Anya Elrock, 43 Purchase Street, Emma Andrews, 10-30-2019, Clinton 71, Elizabeth Galeriani, 29 O Street, Emma Andrews, 10-30-2019, and Clinton 72, Elizabeth Watson, 53 Warren Street, Unit 315, Emma Andrews, 10-30-2019, that's the second reading of appointments. Motion approved collectively. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say, up. Oh, we need a roll call vote because we have second reading. Councilor Ryan. Yes. Councilor Junta. Yes. Councilor Khan. Yes. Councilor Brown. Yes. Councilor Shane. Yes. Councilor Tonto. Yes. Councilor Hogan. Yes. Councilor Z. Yes. Councilor Dublin. Yes. Councilor Earl. Yes. Councilor Hall. Yes. Orders. First order is order 77. Moved by uh, Councilor Connell. Uh, reads as follows. Um, mayoral appointments do not require sponsor sponsorship by any member of the council, but shall require two readings and two votes. Second such vote by roll call. <coughs> Technical difficulties hold on for a second. Um, 
the second such vote by roll call. For its first reading, each such appointment, and this was stricken, including reappointments, shall be accompanied by submittal to the clerk of the appointee's resume. And that's the pertinent part. Submitted, Councilor O'Connell. Motion to refer to rules. Second. Move second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of referring this matter to the Rules Committee, say aye. 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 Opposed? It's in rules. <laughs> Order 78. Um, reads as follows. The City Council accepts with gratitude a gift from Jason LeBlanc on behalf of donors to the Special Needs Swings New Report Fundraiser in the amount of $3,300 to be appropriated for the purpose of purchasing and installing Special Needs Swings at playgrounds throughout the City of New Report. They're accepted in accordance with 44 Section 53A. Submitted, Councilor Tontar. Motion to refer to Budget and Finance. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Wild enthusiasm for that one. Mm. That's a good one. Next item. It's submitted by Councilors Junta and Connell that the City of New Report, in conjunction with the Office of the Mayor, hereby suspends the collection of park parking fees in all parking lots participating in the City's paid parking program from December 20th, 2018 to December 25th, 2018. A sign will be hung on the kiosk stating free parking, season's greetings from the citizens of Newburyport. Uh, motion to refer to public safety. Second. Discussion? Councilor O'Brien. Yes, I'd like just to make a, plus to make a friendly amendment to end it on December 26th, so when they bring all the presents back that didn't fit or whatever, they'll have free parking that day also. <laughs> no, we don't, we don't want returns. returns. Further discussion? No one returns. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. It's in committee. <laughs> and obviously we have to get that out by the time. <laughs> Ordinances. Second reading of uh, Ordinance 25, which relates to the Colby Farm Lane Residential Overlay District. Um, it had first reading last meeting. It's jointly submitted, Councilor Junta and Tontar. Second. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a roll call vote on this matter. Councilor Wagner? Yes. Councilor Junta? Yes. Councilor Khan? Yes. Councilor O'Brien? Yes. Councilor Shan? Yes. Councilor Tontar? Yes. Councilor Bogle? Yes. Councilor Zeed? Yes. Councilor Devlin? Yay. Councilor Earl? Yes. Councilor Khan? Yes. Second reading motion to approve passes. Very well. Ordinance 28. Ordinance 28 is with respect to um, the fees for um, parking and recreation. It is three pages and it is submitted jointly, Councilor Shand and Z. Motion to refer to Neighborhood and City Services. Is there a second to that second. motion? Thank you. Discussion. Just to introduce it as it comes through, so the parks, uh, if folks remember we did the parks re recode, if you will, a few months ago, and this is sort of the one of the pieces that we didn't have the details to fill in as far as the fees, but I, I think there was a general agreement that we wanted to have published fees so that everybody would know what they were, and the Parks Commission and I think the Parks Department have spent some, some solid time going through this, and this is what they've come up with. Councilor Shand and I were asked to sponsor it and we agreed. Um, I'm sure we'll have questions in committee and welcome yours as well. And then, um, and then uh, try and get this out so that next year uh, they can start the year anew and afresh uh, as the requests are starting to come in already um, for the spring. So that's just a brief intro into how we got here today. Good. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's deferred. We're up to committee items. We're moving right along. Budget and finance. <clears throat> Motion to remove communication 97, Second. Moral Foundation Funding Directive. Seconded by Councilor O'Brien. Discussion? None. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's out. Motion to approve. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Councilor Tonto. Uh, yeah, the uh, Mayor Gaydon W. Morrill Foundation um, was established uh, with a mission of uh, providing funding uh, to help beautify the city. Um, so I just wanted to tell you a little bit about how uh, the chronology of the process. 
Uh, so the foundation uh, board determines how much money they will be uh, will be available on an annual basis, late spring, early summer. Uh, they submit that to to the city. Uh, the parks commission, um, have, with that information, then considers what projects uh, they wish to uh, recommend uh, to the mayor. Uh, that that process, the the foundation. Um, does not uh, advertise the fact that the grants are available. Uh, however, uh, like a lot of granting institutions, people who want to use them have to seek them out and find them, and that's what they, that's how they operate. Uh, the Parks Commission makes recommendations after they review the projects uh, to the mayor. Uh, the mayor meets with them, discusses them, the mayor can change them. Uh, and after that process is completed, the mayor makes her recommendations to the foundation board. The foundation board then meets with those recommendations, considers them, and the foundation, of course, uh, has the right to change them. And they did make a few minor changes this year. Uh, so that, that's, that's the chronology, and then I think just this fall, they, they come up with their final set of recommendations. Recommendations this year include uh, $2,000 for gravestone, uh, re, uh, fixing up gravestones at St. Paul's Episcopal Church. And you'll see that the foundation sometimes puts, um, makes recommendations, for instance, uh, just the, the tombstones that are individuals who are important, I think is the way they put it, in the founding of the country, who are buried there. Uh, Oak Hill Cemetery tree planting, $2,500. Bartlett Mall restoration, $15,000 fully funded, that is to improve the Auburn Street entrance to the, to the Mall. Um, Cushing Park Improvement Project, $15,000. Uh, you know, some work was done there. The idea is to um, expand the summer activity area and protect it with uh, uh, planters, uh, flowers, planters. Uh, the Newburyport High School Learning Center, $75,500. Uh, that learning center will be named after uh, Mayor Morrill in recognition that when he was mayor from 1932 to 1933 through 1935, uh, he, he obtained the funds from the Roosevelt administration for building the high school that we all love. Uh, and so that will be, the learning center will be named after him. And, um, and uh, there were a couple projects not funded. Uh, one was a citywide flower planting project, and a second was uh, some work at, at Joppa Flats, and again, that's the foundation's decision. Uh, the vote was three to nothing, three zero, to recommend approval in committee. Further discussion, Councilor Agnew. Now, I, I don't know if it's better directed at uh, joint, joint ed, but what is the Learning Center? I mean, not that it has any bearing on this. It's free money, and we'll vote for it. But what is the Learning Center? I'd ask the Parks Director to give you the details. Hi, Lisa Reed, Parks Director. Um, so several years ago, the, um, the Moral Foundation approached the high school administration uh, to talk about how they might recognize Mayor Gaden Morrill for his part in founding the high school. Um, not only did he get a lot of funding for the school, um, but he just worked tirelessly to make sure that that project happened, um, hiring a contractor, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so after talking with the school administration, they came up with an outdoor learning center that, that would be um, desirable for the high school. Um, and it, it, it's an, it, a, an area in front of the school where uh, they can be used as classroom space, essentially. Um, and then we work together with volunteer landscape architect, um, parks commission, and the high school to come up with a design. Um, the project is being managed by uh, the uh, school facilities manager, Steve Burkholm. And um, it basically with the uh, contribution from this year's uh, moral funding, they have met the budget estimate for completing the classroom portion of the project. Um, there are some walkway improvements to be done to the, the rest of the walkway from High Street up to the high school that are not fully funded by this, uh, but the morals uh, having given 25,000 last year and then the 75 this year uh, would be funding 
Um, the budget estimate was 100,000 to 110,000 for that central portion. Um, so it's brick plazas, granite seating, uh, low plantings that would not impede the view of the high school from High Street. Um, so some planting beds surrounding the, the, the brick seating areas and then some signage to uh, interpret the contribution of Mayor Gaden Morrill to the high school. Thank you. Thank Great. You. Any other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Very well. Other items in uh, budget and finance. Uh, motion to remove ordinance 26, amendment to dog license fees. Second. Motion second. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's out. Motion to approve. Second. second. Moved and seconded again. I heard Councillor Zeed. Discussion. Councillor Tantar. Um, sure. The, um, two years ago, I guess it was uh, uh, fiscal year 16, we, we passed a change in the fees that included uh, a dog fee for um, uh, spayed and neutered dogs of $10 and for unspayed and, and uh, unneutered dogs uh, $15. Uh, the date in which uh, New Report residents are supposed to uh, license their dogs is April 1st, but that, that fee holds from April 1st until June 1st. Um, I guess it was two years ago when we passed it, uh, we also put in a fine of uh, $25 if a late fine in addition to the, to the license fee, a late fine if you license your dog after June 1st. Um, after July 1st, it was raised to $50, and after August 1st, it was raised to $100. Um, the, uh, the sets in the clerk's office, they are the individuals uh, where people come in and, and uh, pay for the license, is that uh, individuals in the community feel that that is extreme. And uh, so they come in and ask, how much do I have to pay to license my dog in August? And uh, you know, $10 plus $100 fine. And you know, they walk out. So they don't necessarily, I mean, there's no way to find them, right? Uh, and so the sense of the clerk's office is that uh, we would get a better return uh, if we were to lower the license fee. Uh, I, as chair of the committee, I talked to the animal control officer. Uh, his position on it was he felt that it was important to get as many people as possible to license their dogs. Uh, and if the higher fine uh, was prohibitive and, and leading people not licensing their dogs, uh, then, then he, he felt it should be lowered. Uh, the reason you want your dogs licensed for two reasons. One is for public health, uh, because when the dog is licensed, they, get a rabies, they have to have a rabies certificate, and that is critical in the community. And uh, secondly, it's uh, when people lose their dogs, um, the animal control officer can find them. So in committee, we voted 3-0 to recommend approval of the, of the decrease, and it would go, the fine would be $10 on um, June 1st, down from 25, $20 July 1st, down from 50, and $30 on August 1st, down from 100. Uh, one other piece of information, Fiscal year 17, revenue from dog licenses was $13,280. Uh, and fiscal year 18, it fell to $12,588. We don't have a breakout on late fees uh, from that. We do know that um, from July of 17 to February 18, we collected $1,695 in revenue, uh, but we don't know how many of those were people who moved into town with dogs versus people who paid light fees. So we're missing some information. Uh, nevertheless, the committee felt that we should try to do this. Well, further discussion? Hearing none. We'll look for, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Didn't catch it. I'm getting away. Was there any problem. discussion about why would we penalize somebody who comes in voluntarily to the clerk's office to register their dog? Why wouldn't we have some sort of provision in here that, you know, the clerk can get, grant a waiver if they walk in? I mean, we want their 10 bucks and we want the dog to get registered. Why would we, why would we find them at all if they voluntarily came in? 
I, 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 can, I can tell you that we, uh, we did not discuss that in committee. Uh, we did, men I, I think I did mention, however, that uh, we're in danger of the, I think it's a council rule, I don't know, council argument, that all discussions on anything to do with dogs must go for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so we may, we may be, is it an hour? Six months, Six months yeah. <laughs> but I'm not sure about that. But the, uh, I think that the reason there is a, a fine and penalty is to encourage people to come in and do it earlier in the year. Um, and the clerk can back me up on that. I, I think that's generally the, the um, idea. I will say that if someone walks in and a new dog, for example, which is usually the case, and um, they just came to New Report, or they just just got the dog or rescued the dog. There's no late fee imposed. Yeah, all right. Just was asking. <laughs> Councilor Ackerman. Oh no. So it, it seems like I, I mean I remember when we went through this. At least my impression was that the animal control officer would levy fines. So you come across someone who's walking a dog. It doesn't have a license, and he said he cites them. He says, "Hey, get a, get a license for your dog." And the, the point is, is to encourage them to get a license for their dog. And so if they're not doing that, it's to penalize them from having, for having not done that. So the situation that was described, of people voluntarily coming into the clerk, is a different situation. You're saying that, you know, you said they could just walk out if they don't want to pay the, the fine because, because they were never cited by the animal control officer in the first place. So I, I still... I still don't understand why you would reward bad behavior of people that are out on the street with animals, and there are thousands of them. They don't have their rabies shots. You know, we don't know what the hell they are. And all they have to do is walk in and pay 10 bucks. That doesn't seem right. So could, could we at least have a nuance? So, well, or maybe it's hopeless. Maybe the animal control officer doesn't give citations. I think that's the answer, isn't it? OK, I'll just sit down. <laughs> Uh, I, I, maybe, maybe the clerk would like to respond. Yeah. He seemed to be interested in this matter. Find. I want to be clear that it's um, $10, $20, and $30 on top of the license fee, which is either 10 or 15 depending on whether the dog is baited. So um, I know Councilor Tontar mentioned this, but over the last few years, certainly has been our collective knowledge in the office that people come in and they're just shocked if it's 30 plus 10, 40. They say, I can't, and they just turn around and walk out. So, I don't have a dog anymore. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> um, Made a mistake. I don't Get know rid if, of the dog. I don't know if, that, if that actually gets to Councillor Eigenman's issue, it is um, usually not on top of an ACO fine, and he is out there giving fines, and we do collect those in our office. I do know they happen, but that's, that's, that's data I don't have. Further discussion. Yeah, yeah, just, just to be clear on that, so the animal control officer does cite dogs and finds them if they don't have a license and then urges them to come in and uh, get a license. Uh, believe me, I also know a lot of people who just, it's one of those things you put off, put off and put off, and all of a sudden it's the middle of the summer. And I mean, a lot of dog owners feel guilty about the fact that they haven't gotten a dog license and they actually do come in and do it. So. I mean, the, the play here is between the, um, you know, the, the, the punishment for people who can't quite get there between April 1st and June 1st, right? Uh, you know, give them an incentive to come in on time. That would, uh, that would militate toward a high penalty uh, versus uh, once you blow past that June 1 date, getting them in because you want them, you want those dogs licensed. Council Ragerman? Why do we even get dogs licensed? Why, why are we even bothering? It sounds like you know, our yield rate is so low. And, and Councilor Tontar made a joke about it before. We spend so much time on dogs. Why do we even bother? Seriously, I, I mean, what does it matter? Why don't we just abolish this? Councilor Tontar. Rabies. Further discussion? Hearing none. <laughs> All those in favor, say aye. We need a roll call. Roll call. Thank you. 
Okay. This would be motion to approve okay. ordinance number 26. Councilor Ragaman. No. Councilor Junta. Yes. Councilor Khan. Yes. Councilor O'Brien. Yes. Councilor Sean. Yes. Councilor Tontar. Yes. Councilor Vogel. Yes. Councilor Z. Yes. Councilor Devlin. Yes. Councilor Earls. Yes. Council President Kahn. Yes. 10 1, first reading. I have to say nay, so. Anything else from budget and finance? Uh, that's it, Mr. President. Education. A couple of quick notices. Just to remind everybody, our, our meeting with the school committee is at the Bresnahan School tomorrow at uh, 7 p.m. Uh, dinner is at 6. Um, and then on Monday, December 3rd at 5.30 at the Senior Community Center, we are going to be having our giant education meeting. And hopefully we'll have our friends from Newburyport Track there. Um, and you're <laughs> welcome to join us for that. Thank you. Thank you. Senior Center, right, you said? Senior Center? Senior Center. Senior Center it is. Yep. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Councillor. General Government, nothing right now. License and permits. Nothing tonight, thank you. Plan and develop. Nothing tonight. Public safety. Mm. Yes, motion to remove communication 93 from November 13, 2018. Right. Move and second. Discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Mm. It's out. Motion to approve. Move and second. The discussion. Councillor Devlin. Uh, yes, I spoke to uh, Ashley Steves. Um, this is the seventh annual Ladies Night Out. Uh, it's from 2 to 4 p.m. this Saturday. Uh, activities are all happening inside Nicholson Hall. Um, they do have a finish line on Harris Street. We will notify everybody uh, a week before, and I told her that we would make this contingent upon this. Uh, they have a traffic, uh, they have a detail officer at uh, uh, where Washington crosses over to Harris to direct runners and allow people in to, to get to their houses or businesses or church. Um, they will only be there for two hours. Um, I discussed with them, and, and they were put on notice about this last year about you know trash issues and picking up trash, and um, they have a plan for that. So they were much better prepared this year. Um, and they have all their sign-offs, um, and um, you know they're only going to be out there for two hours, and uh, then uh, into Nicholson Hall. So, uh, and they, they have their insurance and everything else is in order. Uh, came out of committee three to nothing. For the discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. <laughs> Motion to remove communication 94 from uh, November 13th, 2018, the frigid fiver. Second. Move and second, the discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Vote. Motion to approve. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion. Councilor Devlin. Uh, yeah, discussed this with Bob Manning um, from Newburyport uh, Rotary. Uh, this is the 26th annual. Originally it was run out of the winner's circle. Um, then they, for a while the Rotary did it with the winner's circle. Now they do it with the Joppa Flats Running Club, who handles the, the race organization. Um, they do a good job. Um, they've never, they haven't had any issues. They have all the sign-offs. This is uh, City Marshal is contingent on hiring three details, um, and they've agreed to comply with that. Um, they haven't had any issues in, in the 26 uh, times that they've done it, and uh, it came out of committee three to nothing. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is done. Anything else from committee, Councillor? Uh, yes. Motion to remove uh, Ordinance 73 from October 29, 2018. Stop sign Newhall Lane at Elizabeth Lane. Second. The second did. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's out. This comes from the uh, ward. Is there a motion? Oh, sorry. Motion to approve. Second. Move to second. Councillor Devlin. This comes from the uh, Ward 6 Councillor. Um, 
There's intersections there, three other intersections there that have stop signs. This one doesn't. People blow through at 30, 40 miles per hour. Um, a lot of kids in the neighborhood uh, came out three to nothing uh, for approval. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion to remove Ordinance 75 from November 13, 2018. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Well, it's out. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Uh, yes. Council this Devin. came out of uh, Traffic Safety Advisory um, Committee. A uh, bunch of neighbors on Johnson came out to discuss the speed issues on Johnson. It goes downhill. It's very wide. People really do get cooking there. I'm one street over. I, I walk it a lot. Um, they, uh, we discussed a number of traffic calming issues. I think it was Wayne's last chance to talk about traffic calming and road narrowing. And, um, but out of this did come uh, people park at the end of Johnson for athletic events. I guess to go to an athletic event, it's too much to walk from the Knock parking lot. So you have to park on Johnson. But they Long park walk. right up onto the um, crosswalk. And this, this brings it into compliance with state law. You're not allowed to park within 15 or 20 feet yeah. uh, of the uh, crosswalk. And so what it is is the danger. Kids are trying to cross. They pop out from behind a car. And by that point, coming down the hill, they're doing 40 or pulling in off of uh, Low Street and starting to go fast. So that's it. Came out three to nothing. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? There is nothing further. Public utilities, nothing tonight. Rules committee, nothing. Good of the order. Hearing none, is there a motion to adjourn? So move. Seconded? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Well done. Wow.